Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day. My group will present for the final project for the BMM 3023 Engineering Management and Safety. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day. My name is Muhammad Kebal Afif bin Syamsuddin and my matric number is MA19031. Chapter 1 Project Introduction After graduating our degree in Mechanical Engineering, we are appointed as an engineer in the Nokia Group. After working for Nokia for around 8 years, we are selected as a project manager in their new project to counter a mature market which was held by a giant smartphone manufacturer. The project is focusing on their new model of smartphone. Despite the fact that technology continues to evolve, there are opportunities to penetrate the market for leveraging low or medium cost manufacturing and specification. The marketing department has previously conducted a market assessment and found that smartphones with moderate uh, specification or cost, as well as the capacity to have vast storage and seamless operation, have the most market potential. People choose smartphones with large storage capacities and the capacity to perform complex tasks quickly as the majority of them use smartphones for work. Our objective is to develop and launch a new model of smartphones, to create a new product with appropriate strategies and to put engineering management knowledge and methods into practice in a real-world context. The scope is our organization, the Nokia Group, is working on a new smartphone model to compete in today's mature market. New cell phones must be developed using new technologies. As a result, we must develop appropriate strategies to attain our company's goals using the knowledge we gain in BMM 3023 Engineering, Management and Safety at University of Malaysia Pahang. Our team has been tasked with developing, manufacturing and producing smartphones that meet the needs of our clients in every way including storage, cost performance and smartphone performance, as well as exceptional after-sales service. Our team can determine whether they can effort to invest based on the outcomes. To begin, we must determine the project management procedure. Then, in the strategic management process, we must apply the proper strategy, estimate quantity of new labor required, and measure the company's return on investment or profit from the project in order to compare the result and manufacture a new model of smartphone. In this assignment, our team must also give the net present value to compare which series is more helpful to the organization. Finally, we must make analysis-based decisions and develop smartphones with feature technologies. Chapter 2 Literature Review The beginning of the smartphone IBM invented the first smartphone in 1992 and it was available for purchase in 1994. The Simon Personal Communicator was its, its name. Despite its lack of compactness and legends, the gadget includes some features that will become standard in subsequent smartphones. For example, it comes with a touch screen and the capacity to send and receive both email and fax. It even includes predictive and regular stylus input screen keyboards. This quality set it and made it deserving of the moniker world first smartphone. The smartphone was not connected to a real 3G network until, year, until the year 2000. In other words, the mobile communication uh, standard was created to allow wireless internet access to portable Ethernet device. 2007 was one of the most pivotal years in the ever evolution of smartphone. It was the year Steve Jobs and the Markwork team unveiled the first iPhone. This was not only the sexiest touch screen device on the market, but it was also the first to give a full undeleted version of the internet. Consumers could browse the web on the original iPhone just like they could on the desktop. Number of smartphone users worldwide between 2017 and 2022, the global smartphone user base grew by 49.89% 49 .89 ownership is rapidly increasing. 
with about half of the world's population owning a smartphone and two-thirds owning a mobile device. The number of people using mobile device is expected to rise to 7.516 billion by 2026. By 2025, 72% of all internet users will access the internet exclusively through their smartphone. To put this in perspective, 57.14% uh, of the world's smart, uh, smartphone users only use just phones to access the internet today. Here the important specification for a smartphone. First, life of the batteries. Second, operating system. Third, processor. Fourth, RAM. Fifth, phone screen size. And last, SD card storage. For the smartphone model of competitor, first, iPhone 13 Pro. This is the best iPhone. And second is Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. is the best Android phone. And third, OnePlus 10 Pro. This uh, phone has outstanding battery life. And last, Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3 is the best foldable phone. Manufacturing of smartphones. The majority of smartphones begin with the creation of a proof of concept prototype, which allows de developers to test the handset aesthetics and functioning. The first operating system will be installed by a software team in the next stage of the process. The following step consists of a thorough of and multi prong series of testing. Once the prototype is complete, and a test release strategy has been established, it's time to seek out industry experts to access the device and, if necessary, speak with your designers. The next step in the process is to, to get the smartphone ready for delivery. The delivery stage of the smartphone pipeline is the final stage. For material selection, body we are using metal. It is a, to increase the durability of the smartphone. For battery, we are using m -Zins an in-based nanomaterial that not only extends battery life but also allows battery to shrink in size without sacrificing performance. Using 2D nanosheets, these methods allow the battery to be both conductive and sustain hundreds of charging cycles. For screen, we are using Gorilla, Gorilla Glass. It can endure uh, 100,000 pounds of pressure per square inch, according to laboratory tests. For the camera lens, we are using glass because of its good optical qualities and scratch resistance. Glass is the most frequent material used to make uh, lens elements. A very good afternoon. My name is Catherine Michael. My ID number is MA19207. Today I am going to present about the project overview for our new product which is uh, Nokia X15. So I am going to present about the definition of project and project management process. Firstly, I will explain about the project scope. This project encompasses the production of the Nokia X15, a smartphone that is meant to give the user greater capabilities through more advanced technology and phone capabilities. The project which will last for a period of 7 months is expected to produce an expressional smartphone to meet the needs of technology savvy users. So in our new product, it will include the new features which is Super AMOLED 5.0 touchscreen, screen, 4G internet capability, dual SIM capability, Snapdragon 800 processor, Android 7.0 mode, 16 megapixel camera, 120 gb internal memory and up to 200 gb expander memory so in our product also include data saving mode pinwood battery proximity and fingerprint sensor wi-fi bluetooth and hotspot connectivity so in achieving this a group of four engineers and developers will be involved uh, in developing the phone the project aims at achieving uh, the set of goal and objective with a budget of uh, 25k 5k is for research and 25k for execution second is project priority 
So company director need a decision if they should invest in terms of premise setup, hiring new workforce, engineer, technical team and so on. Purchasing repairs engineer equipment and apparatus and extra to develop the Nokia X50. So they are aware that the implication of money, resources, time and effort that we take care should be risky to invest. So they expect the return of investment ROI around 12% and margin in 4 years time. So to identify the success of the project, some calculation has to be done to make a good decision on this project. So first one is engineer economy analysis which is break even analysis and ROI. Second is NPV, third is decision making 21% percent work analysis, uh, decision making equivalent uniform annual cost and last is decision making internal rate of return for project comparison. Third one is metric structure. The scope timer shows that the importance of the scope is based on the quality of the final product, the time management and also the cost of the product. So the timer shows the connection between the elements. So the cost of the project must be all that all project have been final budget. The customer is willing to spend a certain amount of money for delivery of a new product or service. If you reduce the project cost, you will either have uh, to reduce its scope or increase its time. So based on our project, time, cost and scope take into consideration in order to achieve ultimate success in this project. For this project, the time fixed to complete the project is within 7 months. So in terms of cost, the previous smartphone's cost is higher than Nokia S50. So the scope of project is to produce Nokia S50 with a strong material and low price. So based on this triangle, it really shows that the quality of the Nokia S50 is 100% good when these three elements are taken into consideration seriously. So this will bring a greater profit to the company when we invest on the Nokia S50. So now I'm going to explain about the project management process. There is a five phase. The first one is initiation. Initiation is the first part process of project management. So based on the solution and goals that has been set, so we can conclude if the project is practical to be done. So the following is the flow of the initiation. Firstly, we need to analyze and identify the main problem of the project. Secondly, review current operation and analyze financial costs and benefit. Number four is project uh, stakeholder identified to search whom the project effect and their needs. Lastly, we must project charter which is include cost, task, deliverable and schedule. Second phase is planning. After we done uh, initiation, and it approved it is time to start the planning for the project first one is when we should determine the project plan which is considered base of project task of each team and possible constraint second we must create workflow document by visualizing the project timeline third is gather resources and create functional team that follow the rules and regulation estimate time and cost then we, we should develop a schedule and prepare the budget. Lastly, we must aware of risk and potential quality roadblock. Third phase is execution. The third phase known the, as the execution phase is the cyclic equity rather than a one-time implementation of the initial project plan. So this, this is the part where all the planning made previously will come on to action. So first step is we need to assign and brief the task to appropriate team member. Secondly, we must obtain and manage proposal bills and quotation. Third, collect and analyze data from team members, clients and upper management. Then report all and forecast project to stakeholder. 
then manage risk conduct and implement changes the lastly is the project and collect the document lesson learned fourth phase is monitoring and controlling okay all the activity and metric necessary are supervised to substantiate that the approved and authorized project is completed within time within the correct scope and budget so thus the project could be work with lesser risk so the first step is we should measure the project monitor the project variable then identify the action and the last is we, we should identify the factor changes and improve it last phase is closing the final phase is the closing which become the formal acceptance in completing the project so the administrative tasks which include file achieving and the documentation of the lesson learned so furthermore at the final stage the final deliverable will be provided the project resources will be released and the success of the project will be determined based on the goals and time goals and aims that we that were set at the beginning of the project so there is a two type of closing which is con contract close and project close contract close is the part where is to finish and settle each contract and close each contract pertinent on to the project or project phase uh, the project close is to finalize all the activities across all process group in order to formally close the project and project phase that's all for me thank you Greetings, my name is Kashni Devalakshmi and my metric number is MA19280. Today I will be continuing our presentation on Chapter 3. Well, Catherine has already discussed on Subchapter 3.1 and 3.2. Therefore, I will be continuing um, Chapter 3 on 3.3, which is the Strategic Management Process, and 3.4, the Characteristics of Project. So firstly, let's look at Subchapter 3.3. This strategic management method demonstrates a clear vision for the project and instills discipline in the project selection process. Everyone will understand the company's goal. However, it is important to prioritize project proposals based on a consistent set of criteria rather than politics or emotion, and also it balances risks across all projects. So let's look at the steps of the strategic management. Firstly, mission of the project. Our project mission is that we will devote our human resources and technology to develop superior Nokia smartphone and ultimately improve global society. The next step is the external environment, which reveals opportunities and threats for an organization. As a project manager, we examine the industry environment needs and appraisal of the competitive structure of the organization's industry, including the competitive position of a particular organization and its main rivals. The second, uh, sorry, the third um, step of this strategic management process is the internal environment, which helps in identifying the strengths and weaknesses of an organization. This includes employee interaction with other employees, employee interaction with management, manager interaction with other managers, and management interaction with shareholders. The fourth step is that the new goals and objectives. The Nokia Group company is already supplying Nokia smartphone to consumer around Southeast Asia. Now the objective and goals of the company is to develop a new product development to counter a mature market and that is to produce a new smartphone below RM1000 with 80% to 90% capability of high-end product. The fifth step is to formulate strategies. Strategy formulation is the process of deciding best course of action for accomplishing organizational objectives and hence um, achieving organizational purpose. So after conducting environment scanning, managers formulate corporate business and functional strategies. The sixth step is the strategy implementation, which implies making the strategy work as intended or putting the organization's chosen strategy into action. 
Last but not least, the seventh step of the strategic management process is the strategy evaluation. The key strategy evaluation activities are appraising internal and external factors that are the root of present strategies, measuring performance, and taking remedial or corrective actions. So the figure on the right, which is figure 3.2.1, shows the strategy management process in a flowchart. Next, we will look at the activities of strategic management process. So first is to review and define the organizational mission, which I have already mentioned before in the previous slide. Next is to set a long range of goals and objectives. So the goals are to develop a smartphone that appeals to modern mobile users, enhance user experience through better technology, software and phone interaction, provide a phone with greater storage capacity, provide a long lasting smartphone through strong materials such as metal casing and glass protection and compete effectively with similar brands in the market. The third one is to analyze and formulate strategic strategies to reach the objectives. The team must have skills in order to complete these projects successfully, such as communication skills and uh, time management skills. Next is to implement strategies through projects. Always set time and alert the team about the project's importance. The project needs to be done within seven months and the profit earned through this project is taken in consideration for four years' time. So now we will look at the last um, subchapter, which is 3.4, the characteristics of project. So there are 13 characteristics to look at. First is the life cycle. Each project contains a life cycle that is fractioned into five stages. All the stages must be completed in order for the whole project to be complete. Next is team working. It is the process of working together or collaboratively among the members in order to achieve the project goal. It is often the crucial part due to different opinions and the thought processes. The third one is time. A duration should be set for every process or every work delegated. This is to ensure that the project is completed on time and with full commitment. Uniqueness. Each project is distinctive and special in its own way. Thus, the specifications, deliverable, and endpoint of uniqueness are all explained. Complexity. Certain things in a project may be difficult to understand and proceed. This is when a teamwork is needed in order to brainstorm and throw in ideas to understand and complete the task. Any project would always come with a complex series. Next is risk. Risks involves uncertainty about the effects or implications of an activity that has not been done before. Thus, the outcomes are unknown. Sometimes negative results may be obtained from the risky decisions made. Therefore, the teams should always be prepared of the outcomes. The next characteristic is innovative. The purpose of a few people working together is also to ensure that all creative minds stick together. Different people consume different ideas and way of thinking which could be a massive innovation when collated. Next, customer specification and nature. Every project is always noted with the customer as to whom we are working for or whom we are buying the project. They are um, entitled to select the goods or the manufacturers to be used in the project. Change. Some environmental factors or influences may cause changes naturally in the process of working on the project. This sometimes cannot be avoided. A minor change shall give a smaller impact or adjustments to the project, whereas a major change will give a big difference. Optimality. The goal of a project is always to ensure to maximize the resource usage for the general development of the economy. The next characteristic is subcontracting. It is the practice of assigning or outsourcing part of the obligations and tasks which is under a contract to another party. It is especially prevalent in places where complex projects are the norm. The second last characteristic is unity in diversity. A project is a complex collection of numerous variants. They may differ in technologies, equipments and materials, machinery, procedures, people, cultures, language and many others. The last but not least characteristic is established. Every project contains goals and missions which are the objectives of the project. Once these are satisfied, the project is completed. That is all from me. I will pass on the presentation to the next presenter. 
Ude. My name is Alif Hazib bin Muhammad, ID number MA19282. Today I will present for part result and discussion and conclusion. So for this part, we will analyze the financial portfolio method to improvise a better decision for the strategic management process in quantitative analysis. Okay, firstly is the financial portfolio. So our smartphone model is X15. The competitor is model Y13. Both of smartphones have same specification but different in range of price. The initial investment of model S15 is much lower than the Y13. The expected sale for S15 is higher because of reasonable price. So for the Revenue cash flow uh, X15 is much lower than Y13 or both smartphone uh, is constant for 4 years. So for the payback period, X15 is much lower at 1.11 years compared to model Y13 at 1.5 years. So the shorter payback at investment has the more desirable it becomes okay, for the ROI uh, model X15 have the highest ROI at 90.5 and for the Y13 at 66.7 so uh, model X15 is more efficient For the NPV, uh, model X15 uh, get the highest NPV So an NPV uh, is used in capital budgeting and investment planning to analyze the profit of a project So next is discussion from the financial portfolio calculation, a uh, smartphone model S15 is preferred over the model Y13 because it provides a shorter payback period, more efficient and reach a minimum level of desired rate of return. The high value of ROI benefits the investor and companies where the investment gain profit compared to its cost. A shorter payback period is better as it can reduce the investment cost. So next is the conclusion. So firstly is the recommendation. So during the design of X15 smartphone, the design should be based on the current global needs by taking into several aspects such as color offered, reasonable price with high specification, and attractive design with high quality camera. So we need an effective reporting system such as uh, no reporting issue on the quality of smartphone as it can be uh, improved for next model in next year. So the organization will become more stable and management will be better in the future. So lastly is the conclusion. So in conclusion, uh, smartphone model X15 uh, is the best because it reaches a faster break even, faster payback period, has a good return of investment and higher net present value. So the X15 model uh, become a better and more profitable investment option than the Y13 smartphone uh, even they have same specification so we believe uh, in the way we use to generate profit for the company uh, will succeed while fostering good competition in terms of technology so that's all from me thank you